Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. General reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit to our members, the event is free entirely and exclusively for annual and lifetime members. That's 100% free. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it free again for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up and attending for this event, DM tbradley90 in Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, Today, we have a very special video for you guys as one of our head moderators, Austin, who goes by Aloha Trader in chat, is back for his weekly webinar in which he talks about MIC strategies, market conditions, and how he details his trades. In this video, he talks about longs versus shorts and anticipation versus confirmation. While this is just a preview of the full length, almost two hour webinar, if you want to watch the full length video or any of our exclusive content, then become an MIC member. All right, so longs versus longs versus shorts. Um, I get the I get um, asked a lot about this. Like, hey, are you mostly a long trader? Hey, are you mostly a short trader? You know, everyone in the room seems to be long. I can't do like you know, or everyone in the room, you know, or sorry, no one in the room is long. Everyone's short. I'm having a hard time. Like, you know, I don't know what to do because all of my plans, like, I have a plan and then everyone else's plans are against mine. Or, I you know, I I can only short. How do I improve my long game? So I want to kind of go over that kind of stuff today. And so, you know, I'm going to go over some important trades this week. And again, kind of thin, kind of thin on the stocks, um, pretty slow lately. We're going to go over market sentiment, a couple trader topics. Uh, this is one, this is kind of a new segment. I'm calling it trading center where I focus on like actual planning of trades. I got some important stuff I want to talk about here. And then we're going to do the Q and a. So as, as the, as the webinar goes on, if you guys want to just throw questions out there, I'm going to scroll up at the end of everything and I'm going to scroll up at the end of everything. So I won't miss your question if you guys ask. All right. So let's get to it. All right. So BLN was a trade I took yesterday or the day before. And this is probably, this was like my favorite trade. Oh shit. Not that big. Jeez. Uh, this was like my favorite trade kind of all, all week because it reminded me, it was like what I call a roots trade. Oh shit. It was what I call a roots trade. Um, it, 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 it's a conviction short, which I, you know, which, you know, is how I started trading it. It brought me back to my roots. That's why I call it a roots trade. It normally, these kind of trades is when there's a horrific daily chart. If you look at BLIN here, this is, this is, this is Tasha's favorite chart. This is my favorite chart. I'm sure this is Alex's favorite chart. This is like a short seller's like dream chart. Like I remember when I, <clears throat> um, when I first started trading, we had a lot of these and now I can't remember all of their names. You know, like I've seen so many go by like, like LBIX and G GBSN and EBIO and gosh, I don't even know what ETRM is nowadays, but it looked like this. There was INBT and Sino, all these names that had toxic charts like these, which is reverse split sell, reverse split sell, reverse split sell. This is every time it gaps up, can't hold the gain. Every time it gaps up, can't hold the gain. You know, it gaps up, can't hold the gain. And each time it kind of creates these bag holders and, or this mental resistance, right? This not necessarily, I don't know how many, I don't want to call, I, let's just call them bag holders. I don't know how many bag holders actually hold the bag as it goes from, it was never 120, but pre-split and it just keeps tanking, 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 right? So I don't know how many people of those there are, but every, the point is everyone sees this chart and knows that like they don't want to be holding at the end of the day because every time at the end of the day, it, it, it dumps or by the end of the week, it's lower. It's like uh, new lows, right? So this kind of chart is where a chart where oh, like people might try to long it throughout the day, but at the end of the day, everyone does not want to begin. And that's what makes these trades kind of special. So ideally, like when, when furus get involved in these stocks, it's literally like a gold mine. It's literally a gold mine. When a furu gets in on these charts, it's literally so like you, like, you know, you know, that, that meme where the, where the thing comes up, right? Like that, you know, the eggplant comes up. 
that's this chart right here is like whenever you see something like this if a furu gets involved and they start pumping it it's almost like like this is your size up trade um so this is i was really excited and i knew i should have held it longer too but there was one thing um that i was taking into consideration and that was the volume on the stock we were trading really high volume the first candle was at, oh, 1 million shares and 500,000 in the next in the next few and that's you know as as a longer i've grown and as a shorter i grew I, I learned to respect this and a longer i've grown to like this so even though it was this toxic daily chart i, I should have saved like a piece for for lower just because i know it's it's part of the stock but like just it's habit by now for me to respect high volume NBY, I'm not going to go too far in depth with because I made a I made a video about this. Um, but essentially, like I had a starter short on the stock, um, trying to trade around four dollar line on this name too. Um, this this stock had a little bit more momentum around it. This this gapped up above pre market highs, so I actually had conflicting thoughts in this because everyone from yesterday is underwater. But um, I, I felt like everybody was going to be afraid of the stock because of how, how big it moved, it ran yesterday. So I was trying to not be afraid and, um, it just didn't work out, cut it immediately. Um, so I was expecting some fear and I didn't want to be afraid even though I was, yeah. So I quickly cut it. I, you know, I, I saw a little, I saw a little opportunity for a scalp here and I took it. Um, and then this, I had a nice trade on this earlier. I, I, I was able to bounce this, um, with the idea that every single short yesterday was underwater so that I wanted to buy the first morning wash. Uh, PRVB, I'm sorry guys, I actually don't, like, the only picture, like, I traded this on Friday, um, when, or, Friday or Monday? Crap, dude, what's going on? No, I traded, this was on Monday. I traded this on Monday, and I was on Oahu, I was in transit, so, like, I, I didn't, I didn't actually have, like, I didn't have light shot on that computer, so I just kind of took a picture of the trade on my phone. I even posted it on Twitter and stuff, you can, you guys can see my buys. Like it's, it's, it's even in chat, but like, I didn't have a good picture to, to, to show here. And I'm sorry about that, but, um, this is probably my, like, this is probably my favorite long pattern. And like a couple of, a couple of people messaged me in the last week, like, what's your favorite long pattern? I'm glad I got, I have one to show. Um, PRVB, it, the, the timing is perfect. Like 945, like it's still in the morning. It's still where there's high volume. It's still where, um, big moves can happen. It's mid morning. It's my favorite time frame to buy. Um, Pre-market, this is a standard failed breakdown pattern. It's my absolute favorite pattern. Like, and, and it, this was picture perfect too. So pre-market, we have lows here, right? We have pre-market lows here at $10 and 50 cents. This is where the sock pulled and, and, and bounced, right? The first bounce here. And we, you know, we bounce, we bounce here like three or four different times. And so I'm like, okay, 1050 is the level and what better like you guys have seen all of my other videos my favorite is when we open at a level of support and resistance because then it's like the colors truly get to be shown what is this level is it resistance is it support like i love it when we open i don't like it when the level i'm interested in is far away from because then like then you often get fomo right you get fomo like like Oh, it's spiking up to my level. Do I short before the level? Do I wait? Do I, do I move my orders down? Like, what if I move my orders down and it goes up? Like, you know, like, or what if I wait for it and don't get filled? Like, you know, I, I hate that kind of stuff. So when it opens up my level of interest is when I'm truly, um, I, was when I'm the most happy. Okay. So market sentiment, we were kind of busier this week. Um, then, then, then prior weeks in terms of like we had NBY, I guess NBY and PRVB kind of mirrors um, GNCA and Soli, uh, like maybe not maybe last week, but two weeks ago, or yeah, maybe yeah, maybe last week. Um, they're big squeezers, so at, at, at least we've been getting some kind of, you know, consistently we've been getting at least one or two a week. So it's 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 not one every day or two or three every day, which is like what we like to see, right? But at least it's it's something to get us through the summer. But I gotta say, it's hard to. It's really hard. The discipline is really hard in these weeks, guys. Got to gotta stay patient. Got to stay – like, if there's nothing good, you don't have to trade. Like, especially if you recognize this. Like, I've noticed guys like Alex is in chat and, like, and, and Tosh in chat and even James has been doing it too, where these guys have been posting that they have been um, – they have been cutting their buying power at, like – 
you know, at around like 1030 after the first hour, like good, right? Like you don't want to waste your hard earned capital, right? Like on crappy setups, right? Um, like, and also this is a time where I'm sizing down too. Like, I don't like to, like, this is where like historically I lose money too. So, you know, like, I don't like to be like pushing in this kind of market. And like, I recommend, I guess that, um, you only push when you're, um, when, when your, your setups that, you know, are your A's and your B's are, are frequently present, right? You don't want to, it, it, it's better when they're frequently present because when they're, when, when there's not a whole lot of anything, it's really easy for your brain to say, oh yeah, this is a good setup when it's really not like, and the way you ask yourself this question, the way you figure this out is go, go back to a good chart that you had and find a stock that you traded um, and that you, a setup you loved and said, if there was something like that today, would I even be looking at the stock that I'm looking at? Um, anyway, so what I want to talk about today, what do we got? Oh, wow. Um, what I want to talk about today is longs versus shorts. We're getting a lot of questions about this. And uh, I've said this before, but for people who haven't, um, for people who haven't heard, um, what I like to say is that when it comes, like, when it comes to small caps, there's always the game, right? We all play the game. The game is the stock is going to go up, 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 and eventually come down right? That's the game. And we all play the same game. Like, you know, some of us try to long on the front side. Some of us try to wait for the backside. Some of us try to anticipate the backside. Good luck to those people. Um, but um, the thing about a short that makes a short successful in this game, it doesn't matter if you're right. It, like your idea that it's going to go down, like it's worth, it's worth less than, you know, it's worth less than, you know, the people on the, like, Never mind. It's a bad joke. It's worth less than done, basically. Um, I think it's going to go down. I think it's overvalued. All of this stuff is so worthless, right? It, like it's like one percent of the trade. Ninety-nine percent of the trade is timing, 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 timing. They all come down. But the the question is when, right? That's not. This isn't. It's not a normally. And I'm going to say all. Because I remember Ren, right? Ren did not R E N. Ren did not come down, <laughs> but you know that was like stock of the year a couple of years ago, or like R Y I. That one was a big squeezer, right? Like so, for the most part, like ninety nine percent of these stocks, they all come down. It's just when. So your 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 analysis of like it being overvalued is almost worth jack. Um, and with the long, it's kind of the opposite, right? With the long, it's all about the idea. Like the idea is kind of paramount. You have to be right on the stock. You know what? Because they don't all go up. Unlike shorts, like they all come down, not every long is gonna go up. And I learned this the hard way, uh, late 2018 and even some of early 2019. Anyway, um, it's now, I'm now open to, to Q and A's. Um, yeah, AXSM still ain't come down. Um, Everybody's still here? Oh, perfect. Thank God. Oh, God, that would have been bad if I lost the feed. All right. So I didn't miss much. July earnings fear. <laughs> well, in small cap land, Brian. In small cap land. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I can't wait to trade long um, big caps during that time. Fighting buying power has been great. Um, I did record things. We had the same trade on blend. Yeah, we did, Ben. Um, cutting buying power has been great. I did when I first started trading. Forced, yeah, I like that. Preserves emotions, preserves mental capital. Robotic trading, all that good stuff. Yeah, man, like that's, it, it really is like when you can just like let the trade do its thing. It's just, um, it's, it's, it's a cool mentality. Uh, overvalued plays no role 90% of the time. Smoke a blunt, never done it before, man. <laughs> um, depends on what you learn. Longs can be safer. I agree. I definitely agree. Infinite gain, yeah. Elevator up, stairs down. It's yeah, it's so it's so annoying. <laughs> Dries. Um, takes years to diversify to long and shorting small cap. Yeah, it does. Um, little instinct to you. Yeah, this comes over time. 
anything can happen on a single trade. Yep, that's why you can't, you can never go too big on any one trade because then you're gambling your chance to trade. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, good webinar, thanks. Um, love those checklists to keep the process in there. Yeah, and like I printed them out. I definitely, I printed them out when I was first creating these because I wanted like my goal for making the process was I wanted to eliminate all decision making of the trade. Like when the trading day was happening, I did. I wanted to. I wanted to take the trade basically make it robotic. I wanted to take the trade out of my hands, and I'm not trading the stock. My process is trading, it and I'm executing my process. Right. That's that's the goal of a process is to eliminate all the decision making in the middle of the day. Because you know why like level two is going to make you change your mind. It's going to make you cover a perk. It's going to make, you're going to see a big bid. You're going to, you're going to do all this stuff, right? Level two. It's like level two is going to just mess with your mind throughout the training. You're going to make all these decisions that deviate from the process. Like trust the lines, trust, trust what you predetermine because what you predetermine your process is based on logic and based on your study and based on what you know is like most traders are smart enough to just, most, most traders are smart. Most people who try trading are smart enough to do it. They're just not emotionally capable with it, right? Because they let their emotions drive it away. Well, if you're sticking to the process, it lets all the emotion out. Um, yeah, so happy to take questions. Um, make sure I didn't miss any. Yeah, I didn't. And I guess if there's no questions, then I just... No, pat on the back. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, it will. Yeah, this stock has been nuts. Beyond man, what what a low float for an IPO. Bubbly, I cut out cut out all sugar, um, cut out cut out all sugary drinks from my diet. <laughs> yeah man you gotta you gotta like i was just so afraid of getting kidney stones like i just don't want one i just don't want i never have one i don't want one i'm too afraid to have one and i was like man i get when i first started trading here in hawaii like i was drinking like all i was drinking like the punched rock star like all the time and like, man, it just makes me feel like such shit. And I've been drinking that for like a year and it's so bad. Um, um, thanks, Brittany. Um, what, what, do you, what do you do if your first trade is a loser and then you work the rest of the day to break even or small profit or, or a small loss? Um, if I do that, I smack myself at the end of the day because you know, I'm not supposed to do that. Um, but here's, here's, I think, a better way to answer that question. What I do is I anticipate, I'll, what I try to do before I enter the trade is I try to anticipate, is this stock going to be a pain in the ass? Is it worth it, but can be a pain in the ass? Um, if it can be a pain in the butt, then I, I almost anticipate that I might lose the first time. And I, I, I do kind of go in a little smaller on my first trades if it's like super volatile or I feel like it, it has the potential to be a headache, I'll either just ignore it. Or if I do tr decide to trade, I kind of like start smaller so that like on a quarter, quarter R or a third R or like a half R at most. So that way, if I try a second time, maybe like I can go a little bit bigger and recoup the loss. Um, I don't do that all the time though. And it's only for headache stocks. Um, and then you work the rest of the day to break even or small profit or small loss. Yeah, like, I mean, sometimes when I take a loss in the beginning of the day, I don't try to, I, I try not to trade to make it back, but sometimes it humbles me and, and it makes me think, yeah, dude, just because you had a great week last week doesn't mean you can just like trade whatever. 
And sometimes I fall into that habit. And so like, then it really makes me like, you know, like, like zone in and like, Hey, let me like at least scout my way back to break even. But like, uh, I try to avoid this mindset, but sometimes it actually makes me trade a little bit better when I lose first. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.